All right, let's go ahead and get started. So when you open up Cheetah, it looks like this. Uh, well, I, I usually have my text only. So I'll turn on text and icon just for the purposes of this so people can see. I'm also gonna double click the bar here and collapse it down. And I'm gonna drag this guy over just a smidge so we get as much screen real estate as possible for when we're modeling. So uh, I'm gonna jump into the perspective mode here. I'm gonna go perspective and there we go. And the last thing I'm gonna do is turn off this grid. So I'm gonna hit the gear icon up here, display, uncheck grid. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and hit the drop down menu and generate some primitives. We're gonna need a ball and we're gonna need a plane. So uh, the plane has a couple specific things we wanna change about it. So under this properties, we're gonna go ahead and increase the number of sections uh, in the width and depth, which are gonna help us deform it properly so that we get a nice detailed deform deformation to it. Um, if we don't have enough sections, it's not gonna look super good. Uh, it won't have enough detail to be, uh, to deform in a way that's gonna uh, make it look really crumpled and wrinkly and stuff. So I, again, I just did 40 by 40 up here. That's 40 sections, 40 width. Um, and then the width and depth, I'm gonna scale this up to be three by three. There we go. Uh, so it's nice and big. We're just gonna leave the ball the way it is. And I'm just gonna drag this up. Uh, it's kind of arbitrary where you leave it. It doesn't really matter what value you drag it to. Okay, uh, so for the ball, we're gonna go ahead and add a tag to it. We're gonna add a rigid body tag. And we're gonna change this to be static. Uh, which means basically when I click play on the simulation head, it's just gonna stay there and nothing's gonna happen to it. The next thing we're gonna change is its shape. We wanna make sure that we change this to convex hull, not convex. Uh, convex hull basically means that um, the physics engine in Cheetah 3D will basically react and treat this like a sphere, not some kind of other bounding box. Um, it, it could vary depending on what kind of primitive you use, but for us, we're just gonna use a, a sphere because we're trying to deform it to that shape. But anyway, convex hull is what you wanna go with. Uh, last thing here, we're gonna change the margin down to zero. And that just, again, is for the solver to know that its limit, its boundary between the, the ball and anything else the ball interacts with is zero. Okay, uh, so next we're gonna change the plane. So we're gonna go ahead and select it. With it selected, we're gonna hit tag and hit soft body. And you'll notice nothing happens. It doesn't actually apply the tag. So we're gonna have to double click it which will make it editable. And then with it selected, we can go ahead and click tag and soft body. Okay, so there are a couple properties we wanna change about this guy as well. So uh, I've kind of tuned this to be exactly where I want it to be in terms of the exact properties that get me a really good result. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and change a couple things here. We're gonna change the mass to, uh, I have it at 4.75. Stiffness, we're gonna drop that way down uh, so it acts like a cloth, 0.2. Damping, we also want to be low just so we get a nice slow motion to when it, it, it drops and deforms on the ball. And um, last thing too, also margins, gonna be zero for this guy as well. Okay, uh, so with all that stuff set, um, let's turn it back onto object mode, deselect it. Now we can start messing with the simulation. So um, in order to allow the simulation to run fully, we wanna kinda give it a lot of time to solve. So I'm gonna drag the playhead up here all the way out to 10 seconds or 300 frames. Um, and then we're just gonna click play and see what happens. And there we go, we get a nice deformation there. That looks pretty good. Um, if you wanna customize it, you can click pause and then click again and it'll kind of resolve depending on where it was at previously. I've noticed the more you do this though, the more it kind of stretches the material, the, the plane out, which is not necessarily what we want. So. I'm just gonna drag the playhead back to the beginning and just do one sort of deformation round and just pause it where it looks arbitrarily good. Don't focus on like, oh, I pause it at a certain place so you have to pause it in the same area. So I don't know, that looks pretty well deformed to me. Maybe I'll drop one more time. And yeah, so that looks pretty good. So in order to keep this deformation, uh, we're gonna actually delete the soft body tag from the plane. And when we delete it, it's gonna stay like this. If you were to drag this back to the beginning like you saw before, the plane will just reset, uh, which is not what we want. So let's go ahead and just delete this. Not the plane, just delete the soft body tag. There we go. Um, and now uh, we can delete the ball as well. We don't really need that. Um, and because some of the underside of the plane is showing through, we just wanna maybe see the whole thing 
uh, lit so we're gonna click the gear button and hit light both sides so we can see everything so there we go now we've got a ball to work with and we can add some nice modifiers to it to kind of adjust it to, to our liking so um, we're gonna be using the modifiers uh, bulge we're gonna use that a couple times and then a taper so let's go ahead and jump in so applying the bulge modifier uh, with the plane selected uh, you apply the bulge I should probably show that again let me just make that clear so if you don't have the object selected and you apply a bulge to it it won't be uh, applied to the plane it'll be separate uh, if you want it to be applied to that object you just drag it underneath um, okay cool so there's no exact science to this really you just kind of like mess with it until it looks cool um, a couple things I'd recommend is maybe like scaling scaling these up a little bit because the main thing you want to avoid is just like having a very obvious boundary which would be like right here on the geometry where this bulge is applied like and that's even more exaggerated if you like drag it in a ton it's like okay very obviously the curvature is not maintained um, so we want to make sure we're careful and cognizant of that so um, yeah but this is again not an exact science you can kind of just mess with it until you get something that looks nice um, I usually apply a couple bulge modifiers and stuff so like feel free to go nuts within like whatever you want it to look like if you're going for realism or something uh, I'll apply another one and maybe scale this guy down a little bit so it's a little more reasonable and maybe that's a bit too much bulge I don't know um, you know it all kind of varies so again this isn't an exact art it's just kind of messing with it till it looks cool we're also gonna add a taper effect as well so let's go ahead and do that select taper and then we're gonna just drag this guy down and you'll notice uh, it makes it look kind of like an octopus or a squid or something but if we rotate it uh, it's really gonna help sell the shape uh, even more so let's go ahead and scale this guy up a little bit um, maybe to like even there or something well See now it's becoming obvious where the where the bend is, so I'm just gonna kind of scale it down just a little bit more. Ooh, that looks nice. Okay, um, maybe bring bring this in quite a lot, and uh, yeah, there we go. So with all this stuff, I mean th these are, again is arbitrary what you what you do with this. It's just whatever you think looks good. So that looks pretty decent to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse all of these modifiers down to the plane object by double clicking it and you'll notice they all go away so the last thing we're gonna do to this is apply a crumple effect to the geometry here um, so I'm just gonna kind of select a couple polygons and though and go um, or you can go selection area select which is I just right click area select and we highlight everything and we right click again we go to polygon and we hit crumple uh, and for the crumple effect, there are a couple specific parameters we want to change here. I want this to be 0 0.01. Uh, I want 0 on this, on I think that's the Y, and then I want 0 0.01 on the Z. Click OK, and then maybe just click this guy a couple times. Um, and that just helps give it kind of this bumpiness, which is, which is pretty nice. I will tell you, though, that um, bump maps, in terms of like when we get to texturing, the bump maps will really get you a lot of mileage for realism. So... You don't have to go crazy and add like a bunch of bumps to this because that's not really going to help it. Um, so, yeah, let me go ahead and apply those two again. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, the last thing you might want to do is maybe delete some of these spiky bits down here. Those look kind of weird. Um, and again, I would just do a, an area select and just kind of arbitrarily get rid of the stuff on the bottom. There you go. Cool. Um, and yeah, so last thing we're gonna do is just generate a cylinder, which will be the stem. And we can go ahead and just scale this down. It doesn't need to be, do 16 maybe. Radius, we'll change this to be pretty tight. Something like that. And then we'll just scale it up until we get something nice. And uh, yeah, and there we go. So we already have kind of a, a lollipop primitive here. Uh, and if you add the subdivision tools to this, it'll look even smoother, which is great. Um, but I think that pretty much wraps up the modeling portion of this tutorial. So uh, in the next one, we're going to go ahead and do some texturing, uh, some lighting to really help sell the image here. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you guys in that one.